Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Kaczynski. Proper diagnosis and treatment planning are arguably the most important aspects of implant therapy today. Surgical intervention has proven to be less complicated than ever before as the construction and design of implants along with the surgical armamentarium needed to place them have improved dramatically. Implant dentistry is best practiced with a prosthetically driven approach, in my opinion. Understanding how the final prosthetic outcome relates to patient anatomy, periodontal health, and the physiologic responses to surgical intervention is essential to achieving aesthetic results. If the goal is to accomplish an ideal restoration using dental implants, then bone morphology needs to be accommodated, tissue health optimized, and the implant placed in optimal position for the final prosthesis. Advanced optical scanning techniques and CAD CAM design of prosthetic components help us address these considerations with precision and efficiency, providing our patients with excellent results while controlling treatment costs. Let's look at our first case here, the restoration of a maxillary lateral incisor. Here figures 1A and 1B illustrate a patient that originally presented with a conventional crown retained by a post and core in the maxillary left lateral incisor. The tooth had fractured. The patient elected for a dental implant restoration rather than replacing a post and core and crown. The tooth was extracted and an immediate implant placed. In figure two, we show that after integration of the implant for approximately four months, the soft tissue and papilla exhibited healthy regeneration. Note the physiologic position of the implant, which was placed approximately three millimeters palatal to the facial aspect of the adjacent crown. Also, maintaining that facial tissue over the implant will allow us to get a little bit better emergence profile um, with our final crown. In figures 3A and B, we see a scanning abutment was placed and intraoral scans taken, producing a digital impression that the lab used for CAD CAM design and restoration. So we didn't need a conventional polysiloxane impression. Uh, we didn't need to send it to the lab. It was done electronically or digitally. Uh, we didn't need to mail anything, which saves a lot of time and expense. So our cost for the final product was reduced dramatically. In figure four, we see that following my approval of the virtual restorative design, which was constructed to mirror the aesthetics of the contralateral lateral incisor, the zirconia abutment with titanium base was fabricated um, along with the implant retained crown. In figure five, we see that the, this custom abutment was properly seated using a positioning jig uh, provided by Glidewell Lab and torqued to 25 newton centimeters. The custom abutment was designed and positioned to facilitate a natural emergence profile for the final uh, IPS Emax crown. The, the margins are slightly subgingival here. They don't need to be extremely subgingival. In figure seven, we see the fully seated implant retained crown and final seating radiograph um, which illustrate the slightly subgingival margin established by the custom abutment. The accuracy of the digital impression and design processes ensured proximal contacts that eliminate any dark triangles in the interdental papilla. And our final photograph shows that our patient was extremely happy with the final aesthetic result and had a smile line that was, um, was improved by the implant retained restoration.